This is Ask Lisa, a podcast to help people understand the psychology of parenting now in the midst of a pandemic. Psychologist Dr. Lisa Demore, author of two New York Times bestselling parenting books, takes your questions. And I'm co host Rena Ninen, a journalist and mom of two. Some of what we talk about comes from raising children ourselves. Most of the time, I'll be getting answers to your parenting questions. So send your questions to AskLisa at drlisademore.com. Episode 52, what do parents need to know about edibles? I keep thinking of Vici. You know that song by Vici, I Took a Pill in Ibiza? Uh-huh. <laughs> I know that song. Oh my gosh. I just want to go to Ibiza. We're at the point of this pandemic, Lisa, where it's like finding joy every day. How do I find joy? I want a trip to look forward to. Okay, well, if you go to Ibiza, please take me with you. <laughs> Where is Ibiza? I don't even know Deal. where Ibiza is. Spain. Spain, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, you would know. Awesome. I'm not, I don't even awesome. want to know what the COVID rates are. I just want to go. I just want to no, go. let's just go to Ibiza. <laughs> um, we got a letter actually about edibles, which kind of shocked me uh, a little bit, but this was a great letter from a parent. I want to read it to you. It says, Dear Lisa and Rena, my seventh grader came home the other day talking about edibles after hearing that one of his classmates had tainted gummy bears at school. I flipped out and lectured my son about the dangers of pot. I'm sure I could have handled the situation better, but I was so surprised that I wasn't sure what to do. Where are kids getting these drugs, especially when in middle school? And how should I talk about this with my kid? Help, a worried mom. What the hell, Lisa? What's going on? <laughs> What's going on? Well, um, you know, this is a topic that is kind of roaring into parenting in middle school and high school. I recently wrote about it for The Times. We'll link to my column there. But I learned a lot. And I think I have to tell you, I was kind of naive about it going into researching this piece for The Times. I sort of had the what the hell, <laughs> where's this all coming from response that you did. And um, it's big. So what we know, what I learned in, in researching all of this is that edibles are the number one product sold by dispensaries. Mm. They're hugely popular. And so in states especially where there's legalization for recreational use, there's a lot of marijuana product in circulation. So a seventh grader could readily get their hands on some and then bring it to school. And, and you do hear these stories about kids bringing edibles to school and having them in the lunchroom or passing them around. And it's a strange new world to have to think this through as a parent. You have to be 21 in Connecticut to have it. So you're saying, you know, because it's so widely available, it's, it's easy for these kids to find it, get it. It is. I mean, it may be, sometimes it may be the parent's product. Yeah. And, um, you know, the parents have some at home and they've obtained it and are using it. And then the younger, you know, the teenager or the kid figures it out and yeah. takes it to school yeah. and is passing it around. You know, but we certainly, it's in some ways like the same way that, you know, your older siblings bought beer and right. then it came home and it sort of trickled down into the younger grades. It certainly happens and is happening in that way, though there's some unevenness based on the um, availability in the community. You know, in communities where there's a lot of dispensaries, yeah. we're seeing more of this. Yeah. Yeah. I actually know a mom, I heard a story about a mom who uses her designer handbags to keep CBD edibles <laughs> well, and let's make a quick distinction. So CBD yeah. is not going to make you high, whereas THC is the active ingredient in marijuana. And so when we're talking edibles, they have THC in them. So it's it really can get a kid high. It can also make you very sick. And CBD? What's the difference? CBD, I don't know as much about it, but it's definitely not a reg it's not regulated in the same way. Mm. My hunch is your friend with designer handbags has THC gummies oh. in those bags. Yeah. Um, that those gummies have uh, the basically our marijuana gummies in there. This podcast is showing just how uncool and uneducated I am on CBD. Well, and <laughs> it is interesting. I mean, I felt very prudish as I was doing all of this research. And, and it's, it's, you know, kind of a, it's a funny thing because I grew up in Colorado where certainly people around me were smoking marijuana when we were in high school. And then... You know, marijuana became legal very early there. And when I'm home visiting my folks in Denver, I'm a bit blown away by the widespread availability, driving by dispensaries constantly. And it had already crossed my mind as I was doing that in Denver, thinking, wow, like this sends a really different message to kids about 
marijuana and its basically proximity to their lives. Mm -hmm. And then when I was researching this piece for The Times, I, I got talking with this researcher named Jacob Borodovsky, who studies the availability of marijuana products in a community and its impact on kids. And one of the major findings from his research is that the more dispensaries there are in a community, the younger kids are trying edibles. Mm, wow. That it, it kind of lowers the barrier, the sense of it being strange, and and I'm sure at the same time also ups the accessibility. Mm -hmm. You know that there's just more in the in the universe of that child's life. And then if you're driving by dispensaries all the time or advertisements for marijuana all the time, it just doesn't seem so far away and strange. And so for parents who are listening and wondering how worried do they need to yeah. be about this, yeah. what I would say is like, well, it depends on where you live. So where I live, I, I've never driven by a dispensary, whereas um, I was talking to some colleagues in Oklahoma and they were saying, oh, no, no, they're like they're every few blocks. Yeah. Wow. So that's going to be a factor in terms of the worry level parents need to have about this. You know, the other thing is, it just seems so benign. It's not like you can have that lecture on alcohol. It's bad, all alcohol, you know, what, whatever it is you tell your kid. But with gummies, I mean, you eat, you have vitamin gummies. You have gummies for fun, you know. It, the fact that it's laced with this, I think, is hard for kids to sometimes understand. It could be very dangerous. That's exactly right. You know, so it's gummies or it's brownies or it's cookies. I mean, it, and so there's two problems here. One is exactly what you said. You know, like how bad can a gummy be? Like yeah. how dangerous can a gummy bear be? The other thing is, and this is, you know, from some of the people I talked to as I was researching, they call it highly palatable. It's easy mm. to eat a lot of gummies, yeah, right? Totally. I mean, if, if it tasted bad, totally. yes. <laughs> your kid would probably be safer. Yeah. But they taste good. You know how you can just down a whole brownie. You know, that's very easy to do. And so there's that problem. And so... On that, one thing that does sometimes happen and is really important to note is that there's accidental ingestion by young kids. And so I want to rest on that for a minute for the families who are listening because there are, you know, all of these ER reports of little kids who discover the not well hidden, not well handbag, you know, mm -hmm. disguised gummies. And of course, they eat them. And then they come to the ER. So one of the um, ER doctors, Eric Kazor, who I talked to, he was a really wonderful guy. He was like, for the love of God, could you just please tell people to secure their edibles? Like oh, put them wow. up very high, put them away, put them where little kids cannot get to these candies, these cookies, these brownies. And, and you know, he just he was coming just from the medical side of, you know, this is this is scary. And, and it's scary to have kids coming into the ER having access to these. What, what does he see? You know, the kids that do get access, like what does it do? So what we think about is like, the, I think they call it like THC toxicity, you know, where there's too much ingestion of THC. And, and in little kids, it can be, you know, especially powerful because their bodies are small. And what they see is lethargy. Um, they can also see seizures and they can see um, suppressed respiration is what they're saying, wow. like a difficulty breathing. And and I think the, the function here is that it slows the central nervous system. And so that's really very frightening. And and so there's the accidental piece, which can happen with little kids and which, you know, parents, if they're using edibles, want to really, really go out of their way to make that something that cannot possibly happen. And and even, Rena, if you see the packaging of these things, they look, they're pa not just the item themselves, like they look like the packages of candy. They, they, mm. they, they're they very hard to tell apart. Mm. Okay, but then there's the kids who take too much, though they know what they're doing, right? This is the teenage worry, right? That a, a teenager knows that they're taking something that has THC in it. Yeah. But they take a toxic amount. They take way too much. And and here's here's how this happens. It's, it's sort of fascinating from the biological side. So there's two things that can make it happen, actually. One is it takes a long time for the effects to kick in because – when you inhale marijuana, the effects happen quite quickly. You know, they, they're just, you know, within minutes, usually people can get a sense of feeling high. But with edibles, it has to work its way through the digestive system. And so one of the ways that teenagers or younger, you know, kids who know what they're eating get themselves in trouble is they take 
a gummy bear. They wait five minutes. They feel nothing. They Mm -hmm. wait 10 minutes. They feel nothing. They wait a half an hour. They feel nothing. So then they keep going and they take more. And without realizing what they've done, they suddenly have taken a huge volume of THC and can end up with, you know, the same symptoms that I talked about with the little kids where they are lethargic or they are having trouble, you know, with coordination or they don't really, you know, they've lost sense of like time, location and place, you know, Mm -hmm. that they're really having a lot of very frightening symptoms um, and need to be taken care of medically. So what should you say to your kid? And I mean, it varies from age, right? Middle school, high school, elementary school. Does an elementary school kid get, you know, don't touch the guy? I think it can all be so confusing. It's really confusing, right? And this mom's letter was so true to life around just, you know, like, any of us could have this experience if your kid says, there were gummies in the lunchroom. And we're like, what? <laughs> you know, sort of lose, you know, blow, blow our stack because it's very upsetting and it's very concerning. So this seventh grader gave the parent an opening. And, and I think we want to be really alert to those openings. And it's fine also if you blow those openings mm-hmm. because they do catch you off guard. So this mom who wrote, could certainly go back to her kid and say, you know, I was really caught off guard and here's what I want you to know. And then start to run down some of the things we're talking about, which is, you know, if you're taking an edible, if you're trying it, first of all, you have no idea really what's in it. Um, and you also have no idea how much is in it. And that's another mm-hmm. thing that came up in in my coming to understand about all of this is that the dosing is very opaque that it's hard to know actually how many milligrams of THC are in something. Um, it's in some ways, and it was actually interesting, again, Dr. Kazor, who I interviewed, said, you know, it's actually very hard to smoke too much marijuana mm. because you get high pretty fast. Mm. And, and it's sort of regulating in that way. You know, it's so many puffs have so many milligrams, it's pretty clear. Whereas a brownie could have anywhere between five milligrams and 400 milligrams wow. of THC. And you have no way of knowing wow. unless it happens to have excellent packaging that you look at very carefully and you happen to understand what the milligrams mean. So when we're talking with our kids about it, what we need to say is you have no idea what's in there, whether it's THC or anything else. And even if it's just marijuana, you have no idea how much. This is a complete black box yeah. here. Yeah. And so um, you shouldn't take it mm-hmm. <laughs> because you have no idea what you're involving yourself in. Then you can layer on all of the pieces around how marijuana affects the developing brain. And we know that marijuana affects the developing brain very, very differently than it affects brains that are fully formed. And you know, so after age 24, the brain is much less vulnerable to the impact of marijuana. Before age 24, we know that marijuana influences how the brain develops and can mess with attention and focus and intellectual development. I mean, it's really worrisome. So we can talk all of that through. And then, Rina, I do think we need to walk through the reality of kids getting themselves in trouble because they don't feel like there's anything in there and continuing Mm -hmm. to take more. It's so easy. It's so easy. So I think we should be very straight up about that and say, here's the other problem. Kids are getting themselves landing in the ER because they take some, feel nothing, and keep going. So I don't think you should be messing with these. I don't want you to try them. And if you do, you need to know it doesn't kick in right away. Mm -hmm. And you want to be really, really careful. Uh, So I think, you know, it's that one of those funny things we've talked about a lot where we sort of give a mixed message of don't, but if you do, right? And and it's not ideal, but I think it's also realistic. Mm. I like how you always, you tell this over and over again to us is bring it back to safety. When you're trying to get them to understand it, bring it back to their safety and their development is what you're saying can really make a difference. What age though, Lisa, do you think you should have this conversation? Well, so that's right. That's really important, right? Because this seventh grader happened to bring it up. So threw the door wide open for the mom to, um, you know, walk in and have this conversation. And and she can certainly go back now and say, Mm -hmm. there's more. I've looked into the edibles Mm -hmm. thing. There's more Mm -hmm. I want to talk to you about. My sense in terms of the age would probably be very regional. 
that I would really encourage parents to look around at their communities and their neighborhoods and um, get a sense of how much this may be on their kids' radar. That said, even though I'm saying, oh, I live in Ohio where there's no dispensaries that you know we walk by on a regular basis, we've totally had this happening mm-hmm. in middle schools around mm-hmm. here. So mm-hmm. I, I don't want to give parents a false sense of security that just because you're not walking around with dispensaries nearby or the legalization questions are still being sorted out in your state, you don't have to have this conversation. So I would say probably seventh grade is the latest, Mm -hmm. which is sort of a surprising thing to say, but it's probably the latest age at which I would bring it up. And if your kid isn't bringing it up, I do think it might be worth by sixth grade. Mm -hmm. Middle school. Maybe saying, Yeah. yeah, just saying, have you ever heard of edibles? Like, is this on your radar at all? And just asking and get a feel for what they know and what um, what they may be aware of. And ask in a neutral way. Make it clear they won't be in trouble if they know more about edibles than you expect. <laughs> you know, that's an important point that you, you've said in the past, too, is, like, let them know you've got an open door, you want to talk about it, without making them think, I'm going to come down hard on you. It is important. and And I think also... We always think we're so neutral as parents. Like, we're just asking. Like, we're just, we just have a little question for you, kid. You know, what do you know about edibles? That is not how it's felt by the sixth grader. Mm. That so often when we come with those kinds of questions about behavior that is obviously in sixth grade, you know, inappropriate and, and, and worrisome, kids receive that as like, why are you asking me that? Mm. Like, what's behind it? Mm-hmm. Like, what have I done? Right that would have you put such a strange question to me. Mm. And that's not really the um the great a great way to kick off the kind of conversation we want to have. Well so so, so, I, so I, yeah. I so what you're saying, Lisa, is don't preemptively have a conversation with them? Like wait for a window? No. What I am saying and I'm working it out as we talk it through is I do think you should bring it up, but I think you should bring it up in a way that makes it clear that it's not about your kid in particular. There was no reason that you were inspired to raise this question because of mm-hmm. something your kid did or said or yeah. you suspect. So it may really be worth saying, you know, I, I was listening to this podcast and they were talking about edibles. This was not even remotely on my radar. Oh, interesting. Is this something you've heard of? Or I saw something in the paper about, you know, on the other side of town or down the street. Somebody had some edibles. Like, do you know about these? Have these even come <laughs> up? But to bring it up really with that sense of your kid as an ally in this, as maybe someone who is as boggled by all of this as you are. Um, and and then if they say, yeah, no, I've heard about it, then say, what do you know? Like, what have you heard? And And this is a really essential maneuver in any informational conversation we're going to try to have with our child. Because, you know, obviously, there's a lot of information about edibles that I didn't know a whole lot before I started researching this topic that we can't necessarily assume our kids have any good information on it. So we want to transmit this good information about, you know, dosing and delay and, you know, toxicity and all of that. But before we lay all of our wisdom on them, it's really helpful to say, what have you heard? What do you know? What do you think this is all about? And get their take on it because kids are often holding information and they may be holding misinformation. They may think something's true that's not true, like, oh, well, but it's marijuana and marijuana is fine. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just like alcohol. It's, you know, it's a safe drug. We want to know what they believe, especially if it's misinformation, before we start dropping our information on top of that, because they'll just mash together whatever we tell them with the misinformation they already have. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So what I'm hearing from you today is, one, have the conversation, but make sure you approach it in a way that they don't feel like they've done something wrong. Uh, The second thing I I hear you say is explain how it can affect development and how you might not, eating a couple gummies that are laced with something, you might not feel it instantly and it'll make you take more, which then has a very adverse effect on your health. Absolutely. And and just, you know, the only thing I would add to that is they really have no idea what's in there. And, And that's very scary. 
that um, and and I do hear stories about teenagers who think they've taken an edible gummy and you know they land in the ER. It is clear there was something else in there too. Wow. And 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 that's the part where it can become part of a broader conversation about marijuana or drugs, which is, you know, if your kid is getting their hands on these, if your young person is getting access to any form of drugs, it's not coming to them through trusted sources. It's not coming to them through people who really, really care about them. Yeah. So it's always a good idea to remind kids that we're talking about drugs that, even if they're legal for adults, aren't legal for them. And that usually means they've gone through several hands. And these are hands of people who don't know your kid or care about your kid. And and so that's where I think it's really helpful to say to them, look, you may know the kid who's offering it to you. They may even be somebody you like or you know feel to be a friend. Somewhere down the line, though, is somebody who does not care about you. And you have no idea what's in that thing you're taking. And you need to remember that regardless of who is making it available to you, you know, at school or at a party. You don't know where this came from. Of all the research you did for this New York Times piece for your adolescence column, what surprised you the most about edibles? Well, what interested me and sort of surprised me the most is that it really seems to be trickier than other things we have dealt with. And to open up possibilities that are harder to parent through. And here's what I mean. There's, you know, what we talked about with the kid who might impulsively take it because somebody at school has it and we can talk them through it. There are also, of course, kids who are using lots of marijuana in lots of ways, smoking marijuana, and they're also taking edibles. And that is likely a a substance use concern that needs to be addressed separately. But there's this middle category that was somewhat new to me of kids who are not smoking marijuana, but are using edibles when they want to have a stealth high. Mm. So on the way to homecoming, on the way to football games, on the way to places where adults may be trying to be on the lookout for drinking or smelling, you know, like you've been smoking. And so edibles actually enter into that space as a way for kids to be really, really stealth and show up at a party or a homecoming or a football game stands having taken an edible on the way in, and they're high there. And it's basically not something that adults can detect or regulate or stop. And that piece sort of struck me as different from drinking and smoking, which are frankly harder to hide. And so on that, what I would say is I would deal with that really head on if you think you have a teenager who might be interested in the stealth aspect of edibles. And I would say to them, look, we can't stop you. If you want to do this, you you can. And you can certainly get away with it. And I, and I think it's very important to make it clear to your teenager, like, I get it. Like, I can't, I don't have the power to prevent this. But then to wrap back to the things we were talking about earlier, just to say, but you don't know what's in there. You have one brain that is your brain for the rest of your life. I don't want you taking any chances with it. You don't want to take chances with it. And also, if you get yourself in trouble, I'm here for you. But I don't want it to come to that, and you don't want it to come to that. It's really great. You always think of the things that I never think about and the conversations I never, ever think about having. Uh, Edibles is definitely one of them, top of the list. Along with porn, by the way. That episode on porn, just wow. I never thought about having a conversation with my child about porn. Yes, I know. These are some tricky conversations. So tell us, what do you have for us for Parenting to Go? Well, actually, Rena, I'm going to go right from where we just were. There are things in parenting that we do not want to deal with. Let's say porn Mm -hmm. is high on that Mm -hmm. list. Edibles is high on that list. And there may be other things like a difficult family history around depression or suicide, right? There are things that make us enormously uncomfortable as parents. And we all have the instinct to avoid the hard things. And and I understand that instinct. But what I would say is, if our kids are dealing with it, whether it's porn or edibles or other frightening things, we have to deal with it too. And It can mean being brave. It can mean getting a lot of good information. But just because we don't want to talk about something 
doesn't mean that we shouldn't be talking about it with our kids. An important reminder. That's really good. So Lisa, next week, Halloween coming around the corner, we've got an episode about kids and weight. Yeah. Um, We get a letter from a mom who is worried about her daughter being overweight and is wondering if she should comment. I'll see you next week. Unfortunately, not in Ibiza. Not in Ibiza. I'll see you (laughs) next week right here. I'll see you, Lisa. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to subscribe to the Ask Lisa podcast so you get the episodes just as soon as they drop. And send us your questions to asklisa at drlisademore.com. And now a word from our lawyers. The advice provided on this podcast does not constitute or serve as a substitute for professional psychological treatment, therapy, or other types of professional advice or intervention. If you have concerns about your child's well-being, consult a physician or mental health professional. If you're looking for additional resources, check out Lisa's website at drlisademore.com. We'll see you next week.